Hi, Mary McIntyre here. In this video, I'm going to show you a new technique of using pastel pencils that allows you to bring in a really subtle effect on your paper. It can be used for nebulae or it can be used if you're sketching any deep sky object at the eyepiece that might have a bit of a background star glow but without any actual kind of stars that have been resolved. And in the um, video I'm going to show you today, we'll talk you through how I created this sketch of the Veil Nebula. And what this technique does is allows you to get a more subtle effect with the pastel pencils than you would do if you drew onto the page and then blended it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, keep watching. Any deep sky sketch, I like to just get the, the brighter stars on the page first and that just gives you a bit of a framework and gives you somewhere to go when you're adding the nebula. With this technique, rather than drawing onto the page, I'm using a scalpel blade to just very gently scrape a little bit of the pastel into a strategic spot and then we're going to blend it with a small fluffy brush and this is just giving you so much more control and it gives you control but at the same time you're not trying to blend out an actual pencil mark or a, a, a stick pastel line which can be really difficult to do so this is the western veil nebula and i'm just following first of all the the basic shape of it because the first layer layer that you work on is going to give you a kind of background glow rather than the, the entire structure. I probably used a little bit too much here for the first layer but you can blend it out quite well with the brush and it, it just as I say, it gives you so much more control over exactly where you're placing the, the pastel. So here you just take a very small fluffy brush that's dry and you can dab it to kind of push it into the page a little bit and then you can go over it using a kind of gentle circular motion to blend it. And as you can see, I did use quite a lot on this first layer and I probably should have used slightly less, but this technique is so, so versatile and the way that you move the brush when you blend this will completely change the way that the pastels look that you've just scraped on the page. So here I'm just kind of going around in circular motions to just blend it out and just give you that background kind of glow. If there are any big bits of dust that kick up, you can just blow them away and that'll be fine. To be honest, the most nebulae don't have a harsh edge anyway, so it, it works fine. So here I'm just going in with the, another layer because if you look at the right hand side of the, the Western Veil or the Witch's Broom, you can see that there's kind of these tendrils that extend out. Uh, there's kind of like three layers of it. So I do those one at a time. And this was a photograph taken by Joe Gilker that I'm using as a reference here. And it was a bicolor image, a false bicolor image. And it really shows up the structure of this. And it was just two different colors. And I'm initially putting the blue down because that's the dominant kind of color. But here, before I add the last bit of the blue, I'm actually going in with the red because they do sort of merge together. Now remember at this point, this is just giving you the, the background glow rather than the full structure. Um, I'll show you how to, to do the sort of finer details in a moment but here I'm just following the same principle less is more it's far easier to add more pastel if you need it than it is to take it away so just scrape this off in a, a very gentle way and blend it and then just build it up slowly just work in layers and that that's a really good way to approach this I use a scalpel blade but you can use any sharp object really. An alternative thing you can do is to actually scrape some pastel dust into a small pot and dip in but the difficulty there is you're never quite sure how much you've actually picked up so although you can flick the brush and knock the excess off you still don't really know for sure how much pastel is going to then get deposited on the page. So I've found that I actually prefer to just scrape it directly onto the paper and that way I feel like I have a lot more control over how much and exactly where I'm going to place it. So for this precision part, I'm making sure that the pastel isn't very far off the page so that when I scrape it, it's landing exactly where I want it to be. Sometimes it does float off, especially if you've got an open window. It's boiling hot in the UK at the moment, so the doors and the windows open cause the pastels to blow everywhere. But in general, as long as you're quite close to the page, you can just keep adding to this and just 
say scrape it onto the page really pay close attention to the reference image and just try to follow that as best you can using this sort of technique it's going to be an artistic representation of the nebula rather than an absolute facsimile. We're not going for photographic precision here, we're just basically trying to create artwork. If at any point you need to brighten certain areas, you can add white pastel and blend it in. Um, it didn't work awfully well on this one because it was kind of forming a bit of a grey thing, uh, a grey patchy colour in with the blue. But this is a really good way of adding star glow. If you have finished your nebula picture and you've got the stars on, you can then go back in with the white and just dust a tiny bit around each of the stars and it gives you a beautiful glow. And I'll show you how how I use that to really good effect on the Pleiades and I'll show you a picture of that at the end. I use the same technique. So I'm going in there now with the, the third kind of tendril of the witch's broom which comes down a bit lower and is quite faint and again just dabbing it initially. You can see that I used less here and that gives you that kind of overlapping tendrily feel so you can see that actually using less pastel is better and I should have done that when I started this, I should have used less in the first place. But going over it and just blending it with the brush, you can sort of smooth them into each other, but it doesn't lift it off completely. So it just gives you that softness that is really difficult to replicate any other way, really. Now what I'm doing now is I want to add some more of that sort of fine structure. So I'm doing the same thing in terms of scraping it, but I'm doing a different motion with the brush. Rather than dabbing and making circular motions, if you drag the brush side to side or up and down, it will pull out the pastel in that direction and it will then mimic the whatever kind of structure within the nebula that you're trying to capture. So you can see there that I just kind of did it in a, a horizontal way very gently and I'm going to overlap that with another direction of the tendril and, and it's a big like complex mesh of nebulosity around this entire veil network. It's absolutely beautiful. The whole of the veil nebula is stunning and I'd love to sketch the rest of it at some point this is just one small part so you can do it this way and use the brush you can use a smaller brush to get even more precision with the, the blending but the other thing you can do once you've done this if you want to is go in with an actual pencil and just mark out those very sharp tendrils but for this video I just wanted to show you an entire picture done just with a brush so using pastel pencils but with a brush. I have tried this technique using stick pastels and the stick pastels I've got are a very cheap brand that I got from a, a kind of craft shop though, though not particularly high quality ones and I found that the blending sort of blended away to nothing and it was difficult to keep the structure. The pencils I'm using here are Stabilo Carbofello pencils and I have tried several different types of pastel and I always come back to these. They are just absolutely beautiful quality and the colours pop and the way that they blend on the paper is super good and I just love them so even though so you could use a stick pastel here rather than a pencil. I just find that the quality of the pastel itself with these just works better. I guess it's these are the ones I've used for years now. I just know how they work. So with more practice, I could probably get the other sorts of pastels to work as well. But you can see that just by moving around with the brush in different ways, you get a very different feel. When I'm adding stars onto a pastel sketch, I use an acrylic paint pen. This is a Posca pen. They are probably the most expensive paint pen you can buy, but they are far and away the best. I've tried other cheaper brands and you can't get the precision and the quality of the acrylic paint is really good as well. So I'm just using a Posca pen. It'll last you for years because you're literally doing tiny dots, but the, you can kind of dab around and make the stars bigger. This nebula is in a, a very, very dense star field. So the way that I'm approaching this initially is to kind of squint at the reference photograph. And that gives me a sort of limiting magnitude. And I'm trying to add the stars that are kind of within that limiting magnitude. And then the rest of the background stars, I'm not going to try and get every single star within the background of the Milky Way because 
I'd be here for 10 years. So I'll show you how I approach the, the kind of background star field in a second. But here I'm trying my best to make sure I'm getting the stars that are fairly bright within the right place. And there will be some differences. This is a sketch at the end of the day. It's never going to be precise with every single star and um, none of my sketches ever are but by squinting it just helps to eliminate the background which can be quite distracting and just put on the crucial brighter stars that just kind of bring the whole thing together really when you see the nebula on the page without the stars it just looks like something's missing but once you do add the stars I think it really starts to come together and suddenly it looks like the nebula that you're um, sketching so th this is a, a bit of a laborious process and I know sometimes it's not the best at getting the exact magnitudes there, but as long as you've got the basic star field there, it works absolutely fine. So, yep, it, it, this is actually can take longer doing this than it can doing the rest of the nebula in its entirety. With the, the paint pen, if it starts to dry up a little bit, take it away to a fresh piece of paper to push the nib down because suddenly if it's got a bit dry and you push down a bit harder it can blob a huge amount of paint down to the nib and once you've put that on there you can't get it off so it makes sense to really just dab it and when it starts to dry up just get the nib refreshed by doing it on a clean page and then coming back to your sketch because you don't want to get to this point and suddenly have a whole truckload of white paint blob onto your nebula because you'll be a bit gutted. So I'm going to fast forward that bit and just show you the last few stars that I put on with the paint pen otherwise this would be a very very long video. So I'm adding those last few paint pen dots and then to add the rest of the background stars I used something slightly different I decided to to try a different technique that I hadn't used before so I will explain that in a second when I finish this bit Okay, when you've got a really dense star field, I would do, in a painting, I would flick acrylic paint all over the page to mimic that. But I don't want to do that here because it's a pastel sketch. So what I'm doing here is holding a white pastel pencil quite high above the page and then very, very gently scraping the pastel. So wherever that lands, it looks like stars. And then I go in with my finger and just gently press it into the page. That will add a tiny bit of smudge but will still keep the dots of the stars and that very much looks like photographs of a dense star field some of them kind of merge together and look blended because there are just so many stars that it kind of all has this background glow and actually if you look at a lot of photographs of nebulae around the Milky Way you've got these knots of starlight with loads and loads of stars around if the brighter stars that you've done with the paint pen are in the right place it will still look like the object that you've sketched. And obviously this is taking some artistic license here, but to be honest, if you was doing an IP sketch, you wouldn't see this many stars anyway. If you're looking at a long exposure photograph that you're working from, there are gonna be way more stars than you would ever see at the eyepiece. But this is just a good way of adding that extra starlight and actually really finish this picture quite well. So beforehand, it just looked like something was missing, but once I did this I felt that it had finally kind of all come together so it's a technique that I use for the first time on this sketch and I really really love it and it's one that I'll definitely use again make sure you get all your edges as well because there, there are bits on this sketch where I actually didn't go all the way to the corners so it looks like there's a empty patch of sky in some parts of the, the picture. 
You can take your time doing this, but the crucial thing is that you've got your pastel pencil very high above the page so that you don't get a thick layer. So this is the finished sketch and you can see that you've got those lovely tendrils. It looks very three dimensional. It's got a softness that kind of feels a little bit like you're looking at something through an eyepiece. I think it came out really beautifully. Now, as I said, if you wanted to, you could go in with a pencil and just add some more of the, the kind of just some harder edges throughout some of those tendrils if you was going to do a nebula of this kind. And it would be good to do that. But for the purposes of this video, as I said, I just wanted to show you what you can do without the pencils even touching the page. At no point did any of my pastel pencils touch the page when I was creating this sketch. So I hope you found that useful. It's a technique that you can use at the eyepiece. It's extremely versatile. I've actually used it when doing globular clusters. I've done it with star clusters as well at the eyepiece. And you can use this not just with pastels, but if you're paint doing a sketch with just graphite pencil on white paper, you can use the same techniques exactly, using the dry fluffy brush and just scraping some of the lead onto the page. And it really does give you a very, very different feel than some of the other techniques that you might use. So I'm just going to show you a couple of other pictures that I've done using the same techniques so you've got an idea of some other things that you might like to try yourself. If you do try this technique yourself, tag me on social media and let me see your pictures. I'd love to hear from you. Hope you all have a lovely weekend and I'll see you in my next video.